Hey everyone, I'm Jeff Bagalar, and oh boy, if I look weird, it's because I've spent the last eight days plowing through Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't know what year it is, I've forgotten who I am, and occasionally I speak like a cowboy. Hey, all good out here? This game is massive. While I was writing my review, I was dreading how I'd make a video to go along with it, so I decided that the best way to explain this game was to have a conversation about it. So joining me today is Scott Stein, someone who has not played the game, but is as eager as anyone to know about this. So Scott, let's get right into it. Yes, I'm excited to debrief you on this. Yeah. And I know very little about the game on purpose because I'm excited about diving in myself. Sure, it's smart. It's a smart way to approach it. But tell me about this game compared to Red Dead Redemption 1. Uh, this game feels like much more of a an evolution of what Rockstar is trying to do with you know their ambitions of like storytelling and open world kind of stuff. You'll see some like Rockstar hallmarks like you know the the characters you'll meet along the way and some of those side missions but their intentions it feels like for this game is to sort of blur the line of like what's campaign what's side stuff and everything just feels like a little bit more important. Red Dead 2 is a much different game than Red Dead 1. I mean, is it set in the same time period, or is so it like... It, so it's a prequel to Red Dead yeah. 1. It takes place about 10 years before the events okay. of Red Dead 1, and in Red Dead 1, you're sort of like breaking apart from this gang. Uh, in, Red Dead 1, in Red Dead 2, the prequel, you are a member of the gang, and you're sort of like making your way through an America that is slowly but surely losing its outlaws and, and falling into more lawfulness. So why do you feel so traumatized? You've been talking about how you're, how did this break you? So I've been saying that this game has broken me because of like the paradox of like having to marathon a game like this in, in eight days and be able to write a review. That is not the way you should be playing this game. So let me just put that out there. This game is insanely big on a level that I've kind of never seen before. The only thing that I think comes close to it is something like The Witcher 3, where you're just presented with so much stuff at the outset that it's kind of daunting to just wrap your head around it. I mean, I've played the game for over 40 hours, and I'm only roughly 35% through the way uh, the game kind of like tracks your progress. So I think the marathon pace at which I attempted to kind of like not blaze through it, but just like keep on going and keep a solid pace. As much as I enjoyed this game and enjoy playing it and will continue to enjoy, that is not how anyone should play this game. And I think it's sort of like, you know, uh, it, it shows just how impossible it is to like summarize this massive, massive game in just like an eight day play session. Well, do you feel it's like a pretty solitary experience or are you running into a lot of people or is this yeah. like a... Everything in Red Dead 2 seems unique, from like the bounties that you might collect to, to debts you might uh, reclaim from people. That, the, the brilliance of this game is that everything is so varied and unique, and things that, you, things that you think are insignificant in the story could wind up being this wild chase for hours. This game's like a cowboy simulator. Like a moment to moment life in America in 1899, where like you essentially have to do everything but breathe for this guy. I mean, you have to consider so many things your clothing, the weather. Will you be hot? Will you be cold? Will you be hungry? Will, you, will your horse be okay? That's a lot of variables. Okay, it, there's so a this, lot. This, is it kind of like a GTA 5 with horses? No. This, Red Dead that... 1 was, was in okay. my opinion, much more of a GTA game with horses. Red Dead 2 is a life simulator uh, mixed peppered with like outlaw gang life and you know the way you play this game directly impacts how people think about you how towns consider you how how lawmen police officers uh, look at you like you make your own way in this game um, and you kind of have this storyline of you being a member of this gang to kind of carry it through the chapters. So do you have like regrets then or do you feel like there are moments where you want to go back and play it a different way or? At some yeah. point in video games I was like you know what I can't 
live like this. I just have to play the game and see what happens to me. Sure. I can't go back and perfect life. I can't go back and like change the way this goes. So I think that is that is ultimately the right way to play this game is to sort of just let it happen. Yeah. How much of the game is like travel? When you mentioned like that, you know, you're moving around, you're it's moving a lot. places. And what's really cool is they introduced this thing called cinematic mode, which is in a lot of Rockstar games, but they kind of encourage you to use it when you're traveling great distances on horseback because the camera will shift away from third person and sort of just show you like these prairie, these like beautiful sweeping like jib shots and, and you're able to kind of like pass the time. You know, the wildlife and the weather, there's amazing weather effects in this game where you're just like, I, you know, the line of like photo realism and video game is blurred. I won't get another chance for the ages. There was one time where I came across these two uh, rival gang members and they were just like, keep moving. Like you don't want any of this crap. Consider this a warning. No need for threats. I ain't claws. Keep going! And now I'm gonna like kill them and take that because I'm an outlaw. That's that's what outlaws do. This is a game that will make you sort of have to live with choices on a level. Like this game is deliberately slow at times to make you feel like this character. There is so much stuff uh, that's been like the weight of it. Everything carries so much weight. The game will tell you if you are underweight. You will begin to, you know, lose health quicker if you are underweight and malnourished. So you have to eat. Like, what do you? What do you eat? Like, you, what are you, you grabbing? To, well, you you Just are part of a you're part of a campsite. Yeah. And this gang has a campsite, and everyone they it's, it's sort of like a little bit of communism okay. there, and like everyone kind of like pitches in, and and you know they all you have to keep the camp fed and stocked with supplies, and and if you don't go hunting at some point and provide the camp with food. People are like, oh, we used to eat more. You know, we're hungry now. People don't necessarily want to get spoilers or things like that, but this seems like the type of game where you're just going to encounter weird things on your own, like yeah. things that may, no one else might see. Like, sure. What's like the weird, is there like a weird thing you've seen, like the most bizarre moment you've had? I've seen like real weird stuff where like I stopped once to like help a guy who who, whose horse looked like he needed like a horseshoe replacement. And the guy's like talking to me, he's like, oh, thanks so much for stopping by. And then all of a sudden the horse kicks him because he would like, was like holding the horse's leg improperly. The horse like kicked back, killed the guy, and the horse just like trotted away into the <laughs> wilderness. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, uh, it's a strange feeling that this game is able to create. And I think that's what's been like the most kind of like emotional part of it is like this game has made me feel stuff probably more more so than a lot of stuff I play. Yeah, it sounded like you were saying the silences or the, uh, the question of like judgment in these moments. I mean, GTA, I feel like a lot of times you're moving fast. So like you, you get the thing to get to the next thing and yeah. you need the money or whatever else. But like, yeah, there are those moments where like if it's just you and the dead dead guy, what it, happens and, next? And it's just no nothing for miles. No one's around, and you look around a lot because it's a, you know you have to think of like you know technology is obviously much different in 1999. You're not you know, you're not like oh someone's gonna take a picture of this and I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. It's more like was there a witness? Oh, there was one witness. There they go. I have to chase them down and either convince them to not say anything or deal with them a different way. You know that the oh. the, the game lets you kind of interact. Uh, in a more seamless, you don't engage in like sort of like a, a dialogue tree. Everything, they, they've gone for like a more seamless interaction with people. So you just kind of like hold a trigger. How you feel? Stronger for sure. But not strong enough to work. Is this reminding you of other things that are out there? Um, I think every time a Rockstar game comes out, I think it's you their goal there, to partner. push the needle, move the needle rather, push the envelope and kind of be a milestone in what games are perceived as. And, mm -hmm. and I think the GTA games have done a good job of like, you know, telling a narrative story through missions and then side stuff. And, you know, this game to me tries to, like I said before, bring everything to the same level and not, you know, have you discount things that are just like side icons on, on a map. I think like a lot of games now suffer from map barf, where like there's all these just dots all over a map and you just have to like check all these boxes. It is much less uh, a box checking game and more of like a, a, a story that 
can really go on for a long time and you kind of make your way through it and your experience is likely almost 100% guaranteed to be vastly different from the next person. And the multiplayer, is it, that's not available That's not yet, available yet. They're right? going to do that. I believe the plan is to launch it in November. Um, whether or not it hits that date, we'll see. But don't get me wrong. Like you can play, you can spend months with this game. I, I have not finished it. I don't know anyone who has. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's reviewers out there who have finished this game, but yeah. the people I've talked with, no one's close to it. It is a seemingly never-ending game, uh, and I'm going to start to take my time with it after this. Um, like, how much of my life do you think I'm going to have to sacrifice to play this game? I mean, I think this is a game that you can play two hours a day or, like, uh, let's say, like, six hours a week for six months. Geld here. What are the horses like? They're I'm so, curious about the horses. They're, they're amazing. There's so many different kinds. I mean, like that is essentially like the you know the the vehicle of, of the game. But you can you know you have to treat them well. You have to bond with them. The more you bond with them, the more you can do like special maneuvers with them. You can do these like skid maneuvers if you really you have to feed them. You have to brush them. You have to maintain them. You have to make sure they have. You know, everyone's got like little meters that you sort of have to keep an eye on. And it's detailed. Are there like other animals too? Are there uh, are different I, I think, you interact with, or do you? That, uh, a lot of it is just yeah. for skinning and eating and, and hunting. But just I mean, prey there's, animals. And there's like legendary animals that are like these, you know, almost like mythical creatures, or like a legendary grizzly bear that you know you have to skin. And it's there's a lot. There's a lot. A did lot you, of animals. Did you feel redemption? <laughs> that's just a dumb I will feel question. redemption that's when, my the, dumb when this is right. all done, and I can go back and start enjoying this game at a much slower pace. I'm happy I, I was I was not have to be a real cowboy. Yeah, yeah. I think that's gonna do it. I thank you for uh, for this opportunity. It was very cathartic. I'm happy to provide your exit interview from uh, leaving the world of Red Dead. I feel much better now coming out the other side. If you want to read the full review, it's over at CNET. And thanks for watching.